Big Daddy here with another video in the series of customizing KDE Plasma 5. No, no, it's not KDE Plasma 5. We left the KDE universe and we are now journeying to a world of GNOME. Can you believe it? <laughs> so, if you didn't know, Rob and I over at Linux Quest have are in the middle of a distro challenge, which is pretty much my fault because I'm the one that suggested it. But um, I suggested that we switch because he's been on Arch for a while and I I'm usually on Ubuntu. So I suggested that he run KDE Neon for a certain amount of time and I would run an Arch-based system for a certain amount of time. And we hammered out the details and came up with a two-week trial and he would use KDE Neon and he actually suggested that I use Entergos GNOME. So originally I thought about using Entergos KDE but he suggested that I use the GNOME version and I was more than happy to try GNOME because I have installed GNOME before but it's probably never lasted more than a day on my system and I really never gave it an opportunity to win me over not that it would ever win me over, but I mean, I never gave it that opportunity. So I was more than happy to try it. So on Thursday of last week, I installed Antergos KDE just as a prep for the challenge, just to see how it would go and everything. And it went perfect. So on Friday night, when we decided to start it, I tried to install Antergos GNOME. And I went through the installer and the installer would hang and freeze and it probably took 35 40 maybe 45 minutes to get through the install process at the end of it it came up with an error stating something to the effect of it had trouble with the bootloader uh, try visiting the arch wiki blah 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 well I tried to boot into the new installation and it couldn't find the bootloader so long story short I tried it again and it did the same thing, hung for another 45 minutes. And so after the third unsuccessful attempt, I had already blown up my KDE installation by now, so I didn't have nothing to boot into. It didn't pick up my other, well, obviously the bootloader wasn't there, so I couldn't boot into any other KDE installation or any other uh, Linux installation that I had. So I have Windows on a separate drive, and I ended up having to boot into that, download a new USB writer program, download the ISO again, inst uh, write the ISO to a new USB stick, and then I shut down the computer and unplugged all of my hard drives other than the one I was going to install it to, booted up onto the USB, went through the install process, and lo and behold, it went through. Now, it did take a little bit, but it did go through, and it, and I was able to then boot into GNOME. So that was after the fourth try. So I got a lot of help from Rob. I got a lot of help from uh, Dave, and I appreciate all that. But here we are. So originally, I wanted to see what the GNOME developers were going for, what they're aiming at when they develop GNOME. So I was trying to use it as stock as I could to get a picture of that. And it seems to me they have like a uh, a big corporation mentality about things like, um, like a Microsoft-esque, Google-esque kind of thing where they guess what they think you're going to use and they add settings to that effect and they remove settings that they don't think you're going to need. So... Um, for example, we'll just take the file manager and they take out settings like the per folder view settings. So, you know, if you're in the icon view, you're going to be in the icon view no matter what folder you go into. If you're in the list view, you're going to be in the list view no matter what folder you go into. So, you can't have per folder view. Like, I normally have my music in list and my everything else in icons. So they did take out certain functionality. Now you can 
right click on a folder and you can hit open a new tab, but you do not have the split view, which is something I use often. Now they have simplified everything. They have uh, taken things out and basically simplified the whole look of it. And I do appreciate that. I do like the simplified look. I think it's one of the better looking uh, file managers. Um, but it is really s simple in its effects. Now you can do a copy to and move to, which is nice. Uh, the send to actually does work the way it's supposed to. Like in KDE, the send to really doesn't do anything, even if it's there. Um, and you can't use a, you, there used to be a, um, a service to add Thunderbird to the, um, uh, the mail attachments. So you could hit send to and Thunderbird and it would work, but it, I, the last time I tried it, it didn't work. So, but this send to works perfect and it opens up a new attachment or a new email with an attached file to it. So that works great. Uh, the one thing I did find is the open in terminal now, and this is not maybe specific to the open in terminal in files. It, it may be, or in, uh, what is this Nautilus? I guess. Um, they, it is, it is, um, the programs themselves, maybe, uh, st trying to hang up or trying to start, but they hang up. Like for example, when I hit open in terminal, nothing happens, absolutely nothing. And Nautilus kind of like freezes. So, and that's not necessarily specific to Nautilus. There's, there's a few things that I've noticed that do this, and I'm not exactly sure why it does this. But, um, and then when you come down here and you click on terminal, nothing happens. There's nothing. Okay, so um, I don't know what's going on with that. Now, it doesn't happen every time. There are times where I will come in here and I right click and hit open the terminal and the terminal opens up. I'm just not sure exactly what the problem is. I don't know if it's Arch thing, Gnome thing, Intergos thing. Not sure what's going on there. Um, and same way with other programs like OBS, OBS would open up sometimes and sometimes it wouldn't open up. So I'm not sure what's going on. Here's another issue that I'm running into where the font, as you can see, is terrible looking in OBS. And I have removed my settings folder thinking that it may may have caused some conflicts, but it didn't. Uh, it didn't help anything. So you come in here and these are the default fonts, I believe, for GNOME, I don't remember switching them, so I'm not exactly sure. And I have tried to change some of them since then to make this look better, but it doesn't affect anything. Uh, also with OBS, uh, as you can see, I'm not sitting here looking out at space because I can't use OBS right at the moment because I tried to record, I went through and try, even though this font is terrible looking and everything, I tried to record a video or two with it and it was it was not even usable video. Uh, there was no audio to it, even though the settings were correct. Um, I even tried the original settings of my other OBS installation. And uh, the video itself, it, it depending on which player you use, in VLC, it would just shut off the video immediately. In MPV player, it would play the video, but it would, it would play a part or portion of the video, but it would play like at super, super top slow speed and there still was no audio with it. So the recordings are unusable in OBS on this particular installation. Now, I don't know if I need to install something specific for that to work better or what. So anything that I'm talking about here, you, you guys can comment on and tell me if it's an Arch thing, a GNOME thing, or, or whatever it may be. But I'm just going through the list of what I've been looking at. All right, so... Um, for some reason, now I did say that I was trying to do the generic GNOME without changing anything, but I mean, there's just no way that you can use GNOME default, or there's no way I can use GNOME default because the functionality is just not there. So for example, um, for whatever reason, maybe it's because they hate energy, but they took out the suspend button here. They just don't want you to save power. They're in league with the 
co- the power companies. No, not really. Um, they, but they did take out the suspend button, and I use suspend constantly. And I'm not sure why you would do that, but there's an actual extension to add it back into the menu, which I'm not exactly sure why that would be needed. But um, I did get my VPN installed thanks to a video by Pseudo Reboot. And um, so I did add a uh, an extension to uh, allow me to connect or disconnect or change to whatever sound output or input that I needed right from this menu, which is an awesome feature. Um, I did install the top icons extension where it puts the icons up here. Normally this, normally you just have this up here. These, th- this basically is a system tray and it's usually down here on the bottom left, but this puts it up here. And I hadn't turned that off and was look- leaving it down here purposely trying to get by not switching it around, but you know, so those are some of the uh, the login window itself. Um, obviously, the number locks are not. You know, I'm a number locks kind of guy, and the number locks are not on. But that's easily fixed with going into config. I just haven't done that yet. But the login window itself appears on the wrong screen, and it has a clock as far as the login screen itself. So you have to actually cl- then once you come out of suspend, you have to click on the clock. And then you have to um, click on your name and then hit enter to open the password box. And then you enter your password. So it seems to me there's a couple extra clicks that don't really need to be there. I mean, if I'm coming to the login screen, I just want to be able to enter my password and hit enter. I don't want to have to click three times to get there. Um, but I think that's a, just a gnome thing. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, the... When I would come out of suspend, it was a 75% chance that my Wi-Fi would be disconnected and I would have a box here that said an error message that said you have to authenticate the connection. Although I've already entered the password and it's in there, uh, the password box would pop up and I would have to try it. Now, the password was in there, so I would hit connect again and it would pop back up like it was the wrong password. So I would clear it out and enter the password again and hit connect. And no matter how many times I tried this, it just would not connect. Now, I'm sure there's a restart network command that might have fixed everything, but the only way I could get out of it was to reboot the computer. And then the Wi-Fi would automatically come on. So I don't know what the deal was was with the suspend issue, but I don't know. It's acting real goofy. Um, The music... I wanted to try out GNOME Music because the people that, when it came out, like when they updated it, it was supposed to be really good. But I can't seem to get it to work. Okay, I get things like this. Um, Originally, I had a box in the middle of GNOME Music saying, your music will appear here after it's added or after it's scanned or whatever it said. But no matter how long you let it there, it would not appear. So I would... You know, I searched the internet for it. You know, the internet. That thing where you Google something. Anyway, um, I searched for it, and there's articles dating back to like 2013 stating what to do. It's the tracker problem type thing. And I did the uh, what they said to do, but it didn't seem to fix anything. As you can see, this is what happens. So I am having trouble with that. Um... I showed you the right-click terminal not working. And that's about, I mean, the only other issue I had was my wireless mouse not tracking properly. And I don't normally use my wireless mouse. I was just actually setting it up to use it for a certain specific thing here. And it's not worth it. It tracks all, it like hesitates. It'll go halfway across the screen and then move over all the way over. So I'm just using my wired mouse for now so and that's fine i'm just letting you know what's going on so there are things that i really like about gnome um i do like the full screen menu i am a full screen menu kind of guy although i wish you could change the icon size to be not so big but you can scroll through here and see your icons that's great um i do like it when you hit the windows key 
<laughs> super key and it brings up your well let's see here let's open a couple so when you hit the super key it brings up your applications first and you can switch to them if that's what so that's an alternative to alt tab and then you can just start typing for your programs and hit enter and it opens them so that is that is a nice feature um I do like the notification center. I like the notifications being in the center. I always like my clock in the center, uh, but it's nice to have the notifications put in with this. So like when there's an update and it pops up and it goes away, uh, your notifications will be here saying, hey, there's an update. So that I do like. Um, this is the G no, G, the no menu. The Yeah, I guess it's, well, depending on how you say gnome or genome it's the no menu so it has separate uh a view uh, separate main menu and the actual menu that it adds which is a which is actually a pretty nice menu um you can you can actually set it to open in your favorite apps um and then you can go through your normal apps that you have it even comes with a suspend button. Isn't that great? <laughs> so that is a good uh, that is a good little extension, and that's what makes GNOME usable is the extensions. And we had talked about it before that GNOME is GNOME, but then when you open when you use more extensions, uh, it opens up to a whole new world. So. I think I'll probably make some videos on customizing in GNOME. The customizing in the settings might only be a three-minute video, I think, because that's all the settings you get, three minutes worth. But I think I will make a uh, some other videos on it. Maybe I'll even be able to get OBS working. But the best thing about this is the AUR. And I have to say I love it. Um, it's absolutely awesome to be able to come in here and search for pretty much any program you want and it it's either in the repositories or it's in the AUR and you can choose which one which version you want to use depending on if you want to use the one in the repository or one in the AUR um i don't have to add ppas like rob has to do right now he's drowning in ppas i think and um he hates every minute. Of, no. <laughs> once you get PPA set up, uh, once you get the system set up, basically, it's okay. And it does make it easier. It does make it easy to have, you know, dev files and whatnot. But most everything is in the AUR. There was one, and I should have wrote it down. Oh, my gosh. I should have wrote it down, but I didn't. There was one program I was looking for. Oh, the Extreme Downloader. So I think it was... Um, XD man and XD man is in here, but this is the 5.0 version. There is a 6.0, I believe, out now, and it would be XD man dash download or something like that. I forget, but uh, that is not in here as of yet. But I'm sure it will be there. But I do love the AUR system. Um, I love having the latest updates. So there are good things and there are bad things, and. Antergos uh, does a really good job of adding little things here and there to it that, that make it nice. Um, I just think that GNOME is, well, I don't know if it's for me or not. That's all I'm saying. So we're going to give it another week because if it was up to me, without a distro challenge involved, and if it was up to me, I probably, with the issues that I'm having, and they're not major issues, but I've seen enough to say that if I didn't have a distro challenge right now, I probably would have installed something else and moved on. But because it's the distro challenge, I will give it another week and we'll see. And maybe by the end of it, I will be a GNOME user. Maybe not, but I'm just saying. So until then, Big Daddy out.